Oh. I'm recording Thank now. <laughs> okay. Do you want to introduce us or should I introduce us? <laughs> are you are um, you recording? I just now. Yeah. Why don't okay. you do it? Because you have a way of like setting your audience straight. <laughs> setting them straight. Hi, hi, everybody. Welcome back to Spiritual Growth Journeys. We're having some fun here. I've been chatting away for the last like 30 minutes or so with my sister, Vic, my soul sister, Victoria Reynolds, spiritual luminary. And we've been talking about just all the crazy ass baloney going on on the planet. Um, science, science stuff going on and the fact that they post the science studies um, on the epoch times and, and the normie people or the sheeples, whatever you want to call them. I don't care what you call them. People who aren't awake yet will like, look at that article and say, well, if that's true. It would be all over the mainstream news, which it's not because they'll never report the truth about anything ever until they're completely Probably hijacked not. and taken down. So, you know, the other thing is about this is, um, you know, they just had the convoy up in Canada and all that, which, you know, went really well for the people up there, obviously, because they've let go of a lot of the mandates. Um, there's BC is holding out. There's parts of Canada that are still holding out on the on the mandates, but they it really, really, really worked. Um, and I made a comment to several friends of mine that they've been protesting for the last two years or more all over the world and nothing has really changed that much. And that's because the MSM is still up and running and spreading lies. And so what I said is you can do convoy after convoy and it's not going to change the narrative at all. Um, and the reason why is because um, until the actual mainstream news gets taken out and the truth comes out, it, there's nothing you can do because they have a total mind control thing going on. It's all like MK ultra mind control. And as long as they're doing the controlling and they're doing that, the, the spell over these people, these people are like the walking dead. They're like the zombies. It's like the zombie apocalypse in real time, except it's the mind control of the MSM. So until you take them out of the picture, the world is still going to continue on in this hor horror that we're going through which is uh, the, D the DS throwing out um, nightmare after nightmare situation to take us off of the ascension because many years ago, many years ago, these psychopaths had their future technology that they were able to look into their project looking glass they've had since the 1940s, I believe, or something. It was given to them by the bad ETs, by the what are called the Nebu Greys. They had this technology and they saw that we were going to ascend and they have gone out of their way to sidetrack our, our timeline over and over. I've, in fact, I'm one of many light workers on the planet that have spent the last 10 or more years shutting down bad timelines over and over and over again. They keep throwing off the timelines and then they keep um, sidetracking us off of ascension. So how do they do that? They bring you into a 3D fear frequency. So, um, so they take you down. So, so Victoria and I have been chatting about all of this and we're just going to have a little conversation. And when we come on here, it's like, we're talking on the phone to each other and just having a conversation about all this, but with you listening, <laughs> you all get to listen into all of this. And, um, so what do you have to say about this, Victoria, about all of the, 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 the event after event that they keep throwing into the pot to take humanity down into this fear cesspool to block our ascension? What do you know about this? What you think about this that you want to share with everybody well yeah so all of this is to to block the ascension and, and this, i mean this but where we are right now is what was prophesied two thousand years ago mm -hmm. and we know that and so now we're here in the ascension process it actually started in the 1960s but it has now built to the point where we're now ready to birth this new reality and so they've been doing everything they can possibly think of to keep us in this fear vibration Yep. It's almost like as a co the collective of humanity has been MK ultra ultra in a sense. It's um yeah, you know, in this mind control of fear, whatever the name, whatever the label is for it, mm -hmm. it's that there there's this mind control of fear. <clears throat> because as long as they keep us traumatized, 
that keeps us from finding the true loving essence of who we are. So the, the, love, the essence of every human being is the essence of love. We are actually born loving, compassionate beings. Yes. If they can keep us in fear, <clears throat> they can keep us from connecting to our true loving essence and in fear, we're much easier to control. So these yes. beings discovered thousands of years ago, they could use fear as a means of control. And trauma and trauma. Cause when you're traumatized, you're easy to manipulate. Right. But that's so that exactly, which is why they keep throwing these traumatic events at us. World wars, um, these global viruses, things like that. So it's, it's all about traumatizing us. And so even using well, this one, I've never actually talked about, but there was a belief for a very long time and still is in some fundamentalist religions that you've got to beat the hell out of children. So oh, these were beliefs yeah. that were created to traumatize us as children. Yeah. You know, so I grew up with the belief that um, a child needed, a child's spirit and will needed to be broken in order to get to God. So that, yeah. that abusing kids was actually a part of Mm -hmm. the um the religion i grew up with right yeah mine so, as well mine as well in my religion i grew up with um parents basically can beat the crap out of their kids you know 24 right. 7 and it's okay and it's good yeah so so, so that's an underlying yeah. belief that was created through our belief systems to keep children traumatized and under control mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where children who are loved and and have a, a loving relationship with their parents and they have a trusting relationship with their parents stay connected with their inner heart and stay connected with their their connection to source mm -hmm. unfortunately our systems our education systems and um the media systems the television all of that television is continually feeding kids this trauma-based narrative to yeah. keep them separate so everything that's existing right now is to keep us from staying, from connecting to our true divine nature Absolutely. and connecting to our heart. Mm -hmm. So everything that exists right now has been to prevent, to prevent the ascension from happening because once we are able to rise up above all of that, mm -hmm. they can't control us anymore. Right. And, you know, before Victoria and I came on, we were talking about the fact that ascension happens through your heart chakra. It has to do with your heart chakra opening up and connecting with your third eye and your crown. And that is partly why all of these children, all these teenagers and young adults and even adults are passing away from myocarditis like crazy. In fact, once you get diagnosed with myocarditis, you have five years at most to live. Um, that's what they say, unless you get a heart transplant. Uh, and, um, and the thing is, is the reason that they put that into this thing is because they put stuff into that thing that caused the myocarditis is because it's another way to block your ascension, because if they cripple your heart and they destroy your heart, you can't, they, they believe that you can't ascend. What right. these psychopaths don't understand is all of these things that they're doing are not going to stop what's coming because you can't stop this ascension it's happening whether they like it or not and as long as you and i tell everybody this because i have people call me crying i have women crying saying my husband's not awake is he going to ascend they're like really freaked out about whether or not their family members are going to send and i give everyone the same standard answer it's like is your husband a nice guy and they'll say yeah and and i'll say of course he's going to ascend because six billion people actually will be ascending and it's all of the decent people. And if you're just a loving person, if you're a normal, nice person, no matter what those evil suckers try to do to you, they will not block your ascension. Your soul is always going to be able to ascend. And from what I heard on several psychics um, videos, the good ETs have some sort of, I was listening to Marina Jacoby. And she said that they have, um, the ETs already have prepared a frequency that they're already started sending and that they're going to keep sending us that as long as you're a loving person, as long as you're a nice, you know, person that whatever they put into you, that, that thing, it will be completely healed. And right. is what they're saying. But she said, you have to not be fear-based because people who are fear-based, third density, you know, narcissists, not nice people, mean people, rude people, disrespectful, hateful people, murderers, killers, pedophiles, all these evil, rotten people, they will not be ascending at all. And they will not receive those healing frequencies. Right. Well, the other thing that people need to keep in mind as well Mm -hmm. is that because there are going to be people who are transitioning out who are loving beings so mm -hmm. let's not go into why did that person die remember that they, every soul has its own 
path. Their yeah, life contract on a soul, a soul choice to not ascend in this particular round of the ascension. It doesn't mean that they can't come back and continue the process. But so if you have a person that who is a good person who is a loving person, who is a spiritual person who dies in the next year or two, it's not because they didn't deserve to ascend. It's because it's also every person is on their own soul path. So it's really important people don't get sucked into that as well. Well, so thanks for bringing that up. So I got a lot of, I've been getting new information every day lately from, from our boss. We have the same boss, <laughs> Yeshua. And what he told me was that um, basically the people who are really good people who are leaving right now, he said, some of them are leaving because they already did what they came here to do. Right. And some of them are leaving because they, um, um, they've been stuck in the wheel of samsara. They've been in the trapped matrix that was being broadcasted over the planet. I also learned about that as well. Um, and just to kind of go back over that, this planet was 5d. This is what I found out. This planet was 5d originally. Mm -hmm. And then, um, we, we, the, the people who are here, the beings, the Lyrans, the Syrians, all the people who are here, the ETs that were living here in Atlantean times decided to do an experiment where we create this machinery on the moon that broadcasted what they call a holographic 3d matrix onto the planet so that we could have a learning experiment it was a learning experiment but it was supposed to be temporary number one number two it wasn't supposed to be anywhere near as difficult as it is now the difficulty right. level was supposed to be very mild what does that mean that means 80 percent good 20 percent bad bad like events bad things in your life negative you know stuff right just so you could have like a learning experience. And so it could be fun and interesting for souls to come here and to do that. Well, 11 to 12,000 years ago, the Draco came and hijacked that entire program and they turned it into 80 to 90% bad right. and 10 to 20% good. Right. And so instead, and then they locked it down so that your soul couldn't leave. They'd created a prison. They put us in a quarantine and made it. So when you die, your soul gets trapped in like a net, it goes to false light. And then you get sent right back in into what I call a wheel of samsara and you're suffering and suffering. You're getting raped and pillaged your village burned down and you're burned at the stake and you get diseases and you die and plagues and on and on and on. And then you come back over and over and you do the same thing over and over and over because those evil creatures suck the loose of all the trauma and all the fear and all the suffering of humanity that we are their food, we're their batteries. And so they create that so that when we're suffering, they drink that, they eat that as their, that's their, their food. Okay. That's what they suck. So what I was, what I was told is going back to what I was saying is the people who are leaving now, some of them are people who are just tired souls that haven't been to heaven in 20,000 years they've been or 12 or 12,000 years they've been stuck and they've been recycled for 12 11 12,000 years over and over and over again and they just want to go home okay they're just done they want to go home some of them have already completed their contract and what i was told are the ones who are good beings who are tired or they're done with their contract are actually ascending when they they're going to die and leave just because they're done here like because remember there is no real death okay your soul right. goes on forever this is just a car you drive it would be like okay i used to have a nissan and then i trade and then i went and got a this car and then right. i went and got a chevy and then i got a truck every time you're on a planet you're driving a different what is this avatar whatever you yeah. want to call it vehicle so that yeah. we can get around on the earth and so there really isn't really death. The, the whole death thing was created to traumatize us. Right. That, that was another system created by the psychopaths to traumatize humanity. This whole thing that your family actually dies and da, 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 da. So, so all of the people who check, who have been checking out for since they took down the, the grid, which was in December, 2019, all the people who've checked out since then, if they're a good person, they actually got to graduate and ascend when they left. Okay. So the ones who aren't ascending are the 3d people, the people who are not nice. They haven't learned their lessons. They haven't graduated the program and they're stuck. They will go somewhere else that's 3D where they will play out their little scenario for another 26,000 years until they're ready 
to ascend. So if you have family members, don't get scared and think, oh God, my mom, she's such a good person and she's not ascending, that's not fair. Actually she is, she gets to graduate because how Yeshua did it is he did it through death, right? He was put on the cross and he ascended, but while he was here, and this is what he told me, he said, we were, he said, all of you were supposed to ascend with me 2000 years ago. He said, I was actually teaching you how to do it. And he said, my book that I wrote, which was destroyed by the, the C A B A L <laughs> he had his own book, which taught you everything you needed to know to ascend <laughs> everything in there taught you how to ascend. And that book was destroyed. And so, so he said that, that there's two ways to ascend either through death or in our human body, which we're all doing all of us light workers and all of us that are here, we're doing it through our body, but the people who are our family members, who we really love, who are really decent, nice people who are very heart-based loving, like your grandma or your mom or whoever, if they're a loving person, they also, when they, when they died, they were their physical body died. Cause there's no death. They, they got to go home and they ascended. They okay. did. So that is what I got. <laughs> well, and, and that makes perfect sense, right? I, I yeah. think the concern that, that people have is that their loved ones won't ascend in physicality. Mm -hmm. you know, my, so I, that's why I thank you for that clarification because until fairly recently, that wasn't even a conversation. Right. It was just people die and go to heaven, right? Right. But since I'm more and more people eye. have started, <laughs> since more and more people have started um, having their awakening experiences, now the word ascension has kind of changed its meaning. In that, that um, people are now thinking about ascending within physical form. So yeah, there are people whose souls will be leaving and who will be ascending in the spiritual realm, and those who will be staying here and ascending in the physical realm and creating an environment for more people to ascend in the physical realm so that when new souls do come in, they can come into heaven on earth. I am looking like a stupid idiot here because, what are you doing? okay, I have these two hairs that are like stray hairs that are poking me in my eyeballs right now. They're like sticking right into my eyeballs and I can't even like see you like they're just poking. <laughs> and I keep trying to like pull them away they're like ones that are not long enough to go with the rest of my hair and they're not uh -huh. short enough to to stay here so they're poking me in my eyeballs and it's like I can't uh -huh. even function <laughs> it's like oh that's so annoying it's embarrassing I'm so embarrassed right now but that's okay sorry people I'm being no, a just, dork I'm being like, a total dork right now sometimes I get one like right here right yeah or a little cotton fuzzy yeah. Yeah. I yeah. These were hairs that were actually bent down into my eyeballs that were too long. They were longer than my bangs and they're poking me in my eyes. And I'm like, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry about that. I'm having a bad hair day. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, we all have them. I got, I don't know if you noticed, but I did to my hair. <laughs> Yeah, I, I did a, notice. I actually, a, I didn't say anything to you, but I was like looking at your hair and admiring it and going, oh, wow, she cut it and she changed it and it looks so beautiful. It's very vibrant. It really, yeah, the color is bright. I like that the color is really bright. And it brightens you up. She didn't do anything with the color. Oh, okay. Well, the cut though the is really nice for you. It flows really well. It's beautiful. Good job. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she did a good job. So this yeah. is one of my viewers sent me an email and said, oh, can I cut your hair? And I hadn't, hadn't cut it for like six months, but I was just waiting to see. I was like, you know what? I just got the guidance to just wait and see and not do anything with my hair. And it's coming in longer and longer and longer. So I went to see her and she took a ponytail like... <laughs> And just chopped this big chunk off and put in the trash. <laughs> I have like six months of videos of me with this part of my hair all gray and the rest brown because I couldn't get in to get it colored because of the the yeah. pandemic. I didn't, you know, I wasn't able to get in and have my hair colored forever because I live out in the middle of nowhere, and we have one uh, hairdresser and that was it. And she was booked like six months in advance. Wow. And so I was finally able to go a couple of weeks ago and have the top part of my hair because I had gray all the way down to like my ears, basically. And I finally got it 
colored it because I looked like a weirdo. It was like gray down to my ears and then the rest was, you know, colored. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I'm like my grandma. My grandma kept my her, she kept her hair. Her hair was the same color as mine. And she kept it that color literally up until she died at age 90. I think she finally let it go gray like a year or two before she died because she came down with Alzheimer's. She had Alzheimer's. So then she let it go gray. But until she she had that happen, she always colored it. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so I just don't I have no interest in being gray yet. Maybe someday, maybe when I'm yeah. like 70 or something. But right now I don't want to be gray. No way, man. I get mine done. If I, if you look really close, you can see a lot of gray in there, but I, I still I, have kids at home. I don't want to look like a grandma when I don't even have grandchildren. <laughs> absolutely. I'm with you on maybe, you don't know my mother-in-law, she dyed her hair and up until she died in her late eighties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She did let it go once. She's just out of curiosity. She's like, you know, I'm just curious what my hair looks like. So she let it grow out. She said, I don't like it. <laughs> she went back and got a diet. I was yet. thinking of doing that when I couldn't get into the hair salon. I was like, hmm, maybe I'll just let it go. Um, and I'm sure all the women who are listening to this, because a lot of my clients are my age and older, they're 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, my clients and women, mostly women. So anybody listening to this, I know you're in the same boat. <laughs> but for, for me, it's like, I don't care what other people think about whether I have makeup or I don't, or what my hair looks like, or what it doesn't look like. I don't really care about other people because I don't have an ego like that. What I care about is how do I feel about myself? And I like, and it's just, what do I like for myself is what it's all about. It's like, this is what I want for myself. Not, I don't really care what, what you, I mean, if I went all gray, I wouldn't really care what you guys thought, you know? So that's just where I'm at. It's all about me. What makes me feel good when I look in the mirror, I want to see some color. I don't want to see snow white or gray or something like that so yeah I agree I'm I I for me it's about looking on the outside how I feel on the inside right I do not feel like an old lady my, my kids are so funny mom yeah I feel really I, I'm like I'm not old yeah I got a good 50 years left I'm just getting started I am not old and so mm -hmm. for me it's about projecting on the outside what I feel like on the inside Mm -hmm. and I'm not old so I refuse to look old <laughs> so now that I sidetracked us way off of our topic <laughs> and I apologize yeah. everybody but you know like I said this is just like a conversation like we were on the phone or something having a conversation so the, so. yeah so this is the stuff we talk about when we're not on camera. yeah we we, we talk about all kinds of goofy stuff <laughs> we talk about food we talk about going to the beach and meditating and you know just all kinds of stuff so <laughs> You're, you're catching us in a real human moment now. Yeah, we're very oh, human. I'm not a God. I'm, I'm not God. God is God and I'm Kimberly. So yeah, I'm just a person. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what's funny because, you know, I, as I've explained to some people, I am an angelic being and, mm -hmm. and it, and it's still having to explain to people that even though we are angelic, doesn't make us any less human. Like, right. We're no. still navigating the human experience and just well that's just your soul that's speak. just the yeah. origin of your soul which when yeah. I scan my clients I give them a soul origin reading and you know there's human there's what you call um not human what is it called mortal soul a mortal soul is just like a human like a normal kind of a soul that goes into a body there's angelics there's celestials and then there's elementals and the elementals are the fairy the fae the the gnomes, the elves, the leprechauns, the dwarves, the, you know, whatever, the, the unicorns, the, yeah, dragons, the dragons, yeah, yeah, dragons, all that. Those are all the elementals. Those are created. Those souls are created as an elemental. Why? Because they're multi-dimensional. They can go in and out of different dimensions, pop in and out anytime they feel anytime they want, which is why when my husband watches all his hundreds of finding Bigfoot shows, he watches all these shows where they're trying to find Bigfoot. And he said, how come nobody's ever found the bones of a Bigfoot? Well, they haven't found fairy bones either. And they haven't found no, no more elf bones either. Why? Because they're elementals. They don't live right. in, in 3d. We're in 3d. They don't live in our 3d. They can pop in and out and to reveal themselves. And the people, just so you all know, people who are able to see them, because I have so many friends who can see them all the time, are people who are living in 5D, okay? Their soul has already evolved to where they're in 5D because in order for you to see them, you have to raise yourself up 
to their dimensional frequency because they're in the same space that we're in right here and now, but they're in the higher density. So if you are already a really loving, pure hearted, yeah. good person, yeah. then it's really easy for you to see them. Or at least upper 4D because very, very, very few yeah. people are actually in 5D. 5D, yeah. is, 5D is Christ consciousness. Right. Very few people are in right. 5D. But right. in upper 4D, now, when you were talking at the very beginning about how this used to be a 5D planet, when yep. this was a 5D planet, those were the beings that were here. Yeah, so, they were. They so, were um, amongst us. Yeah. And, and Lilith was the guardian of them. And Lilith has been given all this bad rap. Oh, yeah. They say she's satanic yeah, she and was, evil she was the and goddess bad. And, and, right. But she was the caretaker of all these um, magical beings. Mm -hmm. um, and then she was given this bad rap by those who wanted to control humanity through fear mm -hmm. and turned her into the serpent <laughs> or garden of Eden. That's oh, sorry. Sneezing that, that, that's the, the story of, of who she was, but, but she was the representation of the divine feminine when the planet was a 5d planet. Well, that the patriarchal people stripped anything divine feminine, just like the goddess Bridget, just like you know Mary yeah, yeah, Magdalene. And, they and, said Mary and Magdalene Isis was a whore. And, and they turned them into they turned them into these. They turned her, this beautiful being behind me. That's Mary Magdalene back Mary Magdalene. there. They turned they turned her into a prostitute and a whore. Yeah. She was actually a very successful businesswoman who had lots of money and was really brilliant she was actually the head apostle she was, she was the head of head of all the apostles yeah it was she was a healer mm -hmm. yep. she was a she was a healer she was a, a um a a magi but um high priest she was a high priestess yeah. in the ancient egyptian mystery schools she yeah. was a high priestess of druidism all that kind of stuff yeah she yeah, studied incredibly spiritual it. being and then mm -hmm. she wouldn't have been yes yeah, she was mate if she weren't an incredible twin flame being. there yeah. are twin flames yeah. yeah and so but but if you're creating a a religion right and it's a, a patriarchal based religion that was created mm -hmm. that you had they they bastardized his story and turned her into a prostitute yep and if you read um somewhere in the bible it actually says how uh, one of the apostles was bitching and complaining all the time about how christ always put her first and kissed her on the mouth in front of everybody all the time i mean that's like somewhere in the in bible or history or i can't remember mm -hmm. where it is um in there because i haven't read those chapters of the Bible in many years. I went through years of Bible study and then I took a break from it when I found out that it was all a bunch of bunk. Mm -hmm. So I haven't looked at it since. Um, that was, you know, a long 20 years ago, maybe. Um, so um, the thing is, is that it actually, the apostles were bitching and complaining because she was a woman and, you know, it's like she was put at the head of everyone and she was a woman. And so that's in the Bible where they wrote their book and they're kind of complaining about the fact that, oh, you should, Jesus puts her first and she's always, you know, it's like, get over yourselves, dudes. Partner. She was his wife. Yeah. 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 She also is in her hand in this picture. She's holding mm -hmm. the Holy grail and it has light language written on it because mm. she is the grail. Right. <laughs> she is the grail. <laughs> right. She is the vessel. Yeah, exactly. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, bloodline but, of Christ, but that doesn't um, doesn't bode well for those who build religions in His name. So yeah, exactly. The people who are still indoctrinated into these religions that were created to control humanity, they can't handle this information. They go berserk and they say that you're a blasphemer and you're going to hell and all this crazy. But you know stuff. what they called they called him <laughs> a blasphemer too. So there you go. Yeah, well, I work for him, so I guess I'm equal to that. <laughs> whatever he's he's the boss yeah <laughs> yeah it's uh the re the religions have done a number on people it's another brainwashing vessel so so just so you all know <laughs> before the msm we had the brainwashing of the churches oh well, yeah it was exactly the same thing so yeah. it, it's it's simply a matter of where the where the brainwashing and mind control gets fed to humanity so before mm -hmm. Before the entertainment industry, before television, people had their churches they would go to, and that's where they would get fed information. So the information mm -hmm. has always been controlled and has always been fed to people where their entertainment is. So people would go to church. That was their entertainment. That was their community. That's right. 
That yeah. was their entertainment. So that's where they got fed the information. Mm-hmm. Now the information is being fed through the entertainment industry, but it's always been fed to us in a very controlled way. And mm-hmm. I think it's really important for people to understand because a lot of people are having spiritual awakenings. And it, this the great awakening isn't just about understanding the the um, cabal, for example, right? There are people who think that's all that it is. That great awakening is also a great spiritual awakening as well. So there are some people who are aware of the corruption, but aren't spiritually awake. And some people who are spiritually awake, but not aware of the corruption. And there are a whole bunch of people that are awake awake and aware of both. Mm-hmm. Like us. Awakening, right? And mm-hmm. that amount of people is starting to expand. Yes, huge, directions. huge. So, the, the spiritual awakening is recognizing mm-hmm. that the corruption exists in religion as well. And that mm-hmm. I think is the hardest part for people to accept because they have their soul's eternity tied to believing those beliefs. So disbelieving what we've always believed is really, really uncomfortable for people. And there are people who will fight to death before they'll let go of their religious beliefs. And I understand that. I'm When I went through my spiritual awakening, I was like, whoa what everything I've ever believed about everything is a lie Mm -hmm. and that included the religion as well so yeah um so that can be really hard for people to understand so it's really really important for all of you watching Kimberly and I are actually not anti-religion no I'm not anti-religion not not at all because Mm -hmm. every human being is where their soul wants them to be at, at, Mm -hmm. at a given time and that that at the core of every religion are universal spiritual teachings of truth and love and harmony and care and and all those spiritual beliefs that are at the core of religion mm-hmm. are beautiful, mm-hmm. wonderful. It's the fear-based dogma that's built on top of them that we need to be willing to take a look at. Yeah, well, things like and, the rosary and, 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 what is, and what is the reason behind a particular religion? Is it is right. it a a label that you're just carrying because you like mm-hmm. the label? Mm-hmm. Or are you Christian because you really live your lives the way he lived his life, which is right. Christian you know, means Christ like unconditional love. Yeah. Christian yeah. means Christ like. And if you're um, calling yourself a Christian and then turning around and judging everyone and telling then, people then, they're, they're going to not living. Yeah. You're not you're a not Christian in your life in that, in that way. So and it's not about a judgment thing. It's just to say, and also that, a, a, a direct connection to source god spirit universe whatever your name is for god mm-hmm. that that our religions actually set themselves up as middlemen to prevent us direct access to source yeah. so you can actually leave you don't need an interview based belief so spirit based dogma behind and go direct direct god without the religious middlemen, but that is, that is every person's choice. Ultimately, every person has to make the choice that resonates with their own soul. Mm-hmm. So we're not anti-religion. No, we're not. What we are is we, what we are is pro you listening to your own guidance. I'm pro con- teaching people how to connect pro directly spirituality. with God. Yeah. That's my whole thing right in here because God isn't out there. God's in here inside of you. And yeah. all around you too, but inside. Right. But I mean, in our heart is where we connect with God. That's the other reason that our hearts are under attack right now, mm-hmm. because we're, we're moving into this love-based, heart-based yes. Christ consciousness reality where we're all divinely connected to each other and we're all connected to the divine. We all feel the divine presence in everything. And mm-hmm. that's found here in our hearts. The Christ consciousness is actually in our hearts. The divine father is in the mind, right? The mind of God, the plan, God's plan, the divine mother is in our core, the, 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 this, the space of creation, the divine child is here in our hearts. That's where Christ consciousness is. That's why this is what's being awakened within every single one of us. Mm -hmm. And it's why the heart is under attack. So we don't find the Christ consciousness within ourselves. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. What a, thank you for explaining it like that. That's beautiful. The way you explained it. Cause that's so true between the masculine and the feminine. Yeah. And that's, and that's why Jesus even taught to be like a child. Yes. Be like a child. Absolutely. Here in our hearts. And that's, you know, when children are small, they play with this exuberance, you know, life, <laughs> we might have joy. It's that, but how many people actually get to experience that joy, that pure bliss, that pure joy of going through life like a child and that, ah, 
fullness of a child. Yeah, absolutely. That's what we're moving into. Mm-hmm. That's why everything that's happening to us right now is to prevent our hearts from working to that full potential because fear actually blocks our heart's ability. Mm-hmm. So we got to wake up and not allow fear to control us. And remember that the, 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 the heart of Christ is actually here in our hearts. Mm -hmm. Yes. And also um, when you block your heart chakra uh, with fear, with hate, with grief and with unforgiveness and with shame, uh, blame and guilt, all of those emotions, those are all fear. Those are all fear-based emotions. Yeah. When you, when you, when you, have those emotions within you, you block your heart chakra and then you get cardiovascular issues, hypertension or hypotension, circulatory system issues, um, lung uh, cancers and lung problems, esophageal cancers, all of that is all heart chakra. So that is uh, because everything that happens to us emotionally hits your energy body first in the chakra system, and then it manifests as illness in your body. And so if you don't process your grief, I'm not saying don't have grief, because if your family member passes away, you're going to have grief, but you need to process it in a healthy, holistic manner, because if you leave it unprocessed and you bury it deep within yourself and you don't uh, heal it and clear it and balance it, what happens is you will have a heart attack or you'll have high blood pressure or you'll have a stroke or you'll have lung cancer or you'll get one of those, um, you know, respiratory diseases really easily. That's what will happen to you. So it's so important to be constantly processing and clearing and healing our emotions. And the biggest one right now for the world, Victoria and everyone watching is trauma and all of our children's are traumatized are the children this whole generation of kids is so horrifically traumatized that the speech pathologist offices are full to the max with kids who can't speak properly little ones little kiddos because if it, it, the last two plus years of their life they haven't been able to see people's faces and so they can't even speak properly a lot of them can't speak because of the trauma the trauma gave them like a speech impediment or some kind of a problem um i've seen so many kids when i was a kid whose parents beat them and as a result they had speech problems or speech delays or learning delays as a result and that's what it's doing and it's causing huge learning delays huge learning disabilities because of not being able to be in the classrooms for the last two years and have the instruction they need you know just all kinds of things the biggest thing is them not being able to socially interact with people and not being able to see. Um, they're not getting their social cues. Yeah, they're not getting their social cues and the social emotional stuff that kids learn, learn from being able to read your facial expressions. And if they can't see your face for two years and they're a young kid, they're not learning how to socialize properly or behave around other people because they're not seeing those cues when you when you speak the body language and the facial expression and all that. Like if you're angry, they don't know if you're angry. If your face is all covered up, how do they know that? You know, well, and even I think it's the CDC that that puts out the the um, notices that you know that they so they've actually changed. Now we know it's because of all this, right? Mm -hmm. But they've changed the developmental age for things. So now they've taken crawling completely out of the developmental phase. They've changed walking from twelve months to eighteen months. They've changed talking from 18 months to two years. So they've just basically, instead of accepting, and this just came out a couple of days ago, instead of accepting that this is the reason for the developmental delays. They don't want people to know. They don't want to admit that. And so Mm -hmm. instead what they've done is just change the developmental calendar. The guidelines, they keep pushing the the, the the numbers to cover their So children aren't learning how to talk. Right. My kids were both talking by like literally talking by the time they were 12 months old, which- Mm -hmm completely dumbfounded the pediatrician. Mine were too. Mine yeah, were too. And um, could complete sentences by the time they were a year and a half. Yeah. And now, too. because kids can't actually see people talk, they're not learning how to talk. It's like trying to learn how to talk by watching television. They're not getting the, how the mouth moves and how the tongue moves to be able to develop those skills of talking. Mm-hmm. So they're not learning how to talk the way they used to. Mm-hmm. So, 
you know, and and so let's not get into that because I, I told myself at the beginning that we were not going to focus on what's wrong with the world. Yeah, let's talk um, about what we need to do. focus on the solutions because so let's give everybody thing, solutions. Right, because it's one thing to recognize yeah. the issues, mm-hmm. and here's what people need to understand: if all we're doing is focusing on the problems, mm-hmm. we are actually energizing the problems. We're actually making them last longer. So when people ask right. me why is it taking so long, what I want to say is because you are focusing on what's wrong with the world. What we energize is what gets created. So if we're only focusing on what's wrong with the world and all of the bad things that are happening in the world, we are actually energizing that and making it last longer. Mm-hmm. As we, we get what we focus on, that is one of the laws of the universe that we get what we focus on. So if we're only focusing on what's wrong, we're going to get more of what's wrong, what we yeah. pursue being wrong right Mm -hmm. and there's also one of the laws of um what you resist persists yes it's pushing resistance out there again that's what i focus on we're going to keep that's going to keep persisting Mm -hmm. so we've got to shift our focus off of what we all perceive as being wrong and shift it to the world we want to create it's one thing to recognize it great i see what's happening over here and i'm going to shift my focus over into the world i want to see created that's how we create it. When, when, when people are complaining about why it's taking so long, it's because of our own resonance that's causing it to take so long. When right. enough of us shift into loving and enough of us shift into light and enough of us create that in our world, the, the rest of it will have no choice but to be dismantled because it can't even exist in our presence. So mm-hmm. we've got to stop focusing on what's wrong with the world. So let's, so let, so let me, I want to talk to everybody right now about what I see we should do to like fix this trauma situation. So every human on earth has been traumatized horribly in the last two years, not just the children, but everybody, everybody's been traumatized. And that's why they turn it into a global event. They want to be able to control the entire globe. Yeah. Because the more they traumatize you, the more they control you. So here's how you fix it. You need to be meditating every day. You need to go to, you need to either learn how to do energy work on yourself, like Reiki or chakra balancing or quantum touch or pranic healing or Donna Eden's program is beautiful and incredible. You need to learn how to either do that on yourself or you need to go to practitioners because you need to start working on healing the trauma. You can do psych K, you can do body talk, you can do, uh, QHHT. I mean, there's so many different methods out mm-hmm. there for you to, um, I mean, there's a plethora, you will never run out of methods and you just pick something that resonates, go and read about it first and say, Hmm, that doesn't resonate with me. Push it aside. Look at the next thing and go, Oh yeah, that resonates with me. Go and do the healing. And then once you've healed yourself, turn around and heal your kids. It's like, you got to put the oxygen mask on yourself first because you can't, if you're not here, if you die of a heart attack because you're holding on to all this trauma, then your child's not going to have you around to fix them anyway. So fix yourself and then go and get your kids to a Reiki practitioner or a um, um, psych K or a body talk or something like that. Body talk works really phenomenal for children. They really love it. It works. In fact, that's used more on children than anything that I know of. It's just a wonderful modality, Body Talk International. Um, I used it on myself to cure myself of hundreds of allergies. Allergies is one of the biggest things it works on, but um, it's very soothing and relaxing. They have your child lie on a table and they would play really soothing, you know, high frequency music in the background and they use, you know, essential oils and all sorts of different things and uh, singing bowls and tuning forks and all kinds of things that they, they do to help the child uh, to heal. It's like a combination of a lot of things. Um, but mainly talking to the, the child's body or to your body, if you go there, asking your body, where is the energy stuck in the body and what does the body want? to reprogram it and transmute that energy and get rid of it. So, um, so that's one of my favorite go-tos for myself, for healing myself over and over again is body talk. I have a pr- practitioner that I refer people to, and she can do distance, uh, work as well as in person. Um, but you can even go to the body talk international website to find a practitioner near you. And it's a really, really good one for children because it's very, 
it's non-threatening to them. It won't scare them. It'll make them very calm. It'll make them feel, you know, really calm. Reiki is also really good for kids because they lie down and you're just flowing your energy over the top of them. So it's very soothing, you know, to a child, it's not going to scare them. Um, but those are some things, but the fact of the matter is we need to address the trauma and how you do it is you use all the beautiful healing technologies that are on the planet, get a hold of a rife machine, get a hold of a Healy. There's all of these different um, devices you can use, energy medicine devices. There's, I just got a Resitone 12 in the mail a few days ago. I oh, used did it. You? Yeah, yeah, I used it I yesterday. I haven't received mine yet. Oh, okay. I don't, I thought, I thought I brought it with me down here into the office, but I left it up stairs. Okay. So I don't, but I, I used it last night for the first time. They're supposed to hold it in your hand while you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. Um, I did the thing where you, you plug it in, you charge it for 20 minutes and then you lay down and meditate with it for like 45 minutes or an hour or whatever. And, and, it, and it has an angel. Every one of them has an angel. That comes everyone with has an angel every angel that's with it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And so I can't give anybody a testimonial yet as to whether it works because I literally just tried, I just got it and I'm just starting it, but I will be able to report back to everyone on my channel and on social media in the coming month or weeks or whatever, and let people know if I, if for me personally, it's making right. a difference. So, um, cause I like to use myself as a Guinea pig and try out different things so I can recommend them to my clients. I do so that this, too. Yeah, yeah. So this is one of those things, but there's so you guys, you need to know that there are hundreds of devices now, medical alternative, holistic medical devices out there. Um, people are building all kinds of little equipment and stuff. I've been referred all over the place to different people for myself um, that have all these different little mechanical things that they're building that they call little mini med beds and this and that. And then there's med bed meditation thing that they do on people where you lay down and you meditate and they supposedly take your your astral body up onto a ship and all that kind of thing. So there's all these different um, beautiful things that God has given us to heal ourselves and all of the healers all over the world that are just, you know, biting up the chomp, ready to serve you and ready to help humanity. There's so many light workers all over the world that are ready and raring to go. So, so get out there and start working, work on yourself and then work on your kids. Because if we don't all release and let go of all, I don't like to use the word release. Cause that means bringing it, re, bringing it. Oh, so you know, you know, you, you know what I do go? with that? What I do with the word release now? What do you do? So I release it back to the universe. Oh, okay. So we can still use the word release, but a, a lot of people aren't using it correctly. So they release something, yeah. which, is, which means to lease again, and then wonder why they keep experiencing the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Uh, so for me, I release it back to the universe uh -huh. to do with what the universe does. Back wow. Nothingness from whence it came. Wow. Right. So you let it go and release it back to the universe. You know, it's like giving I it like back that. to God kind of thing. Yeah. Giving it back to God. That's, yeah. I just say, let it go when I'm working on myself. I or go. When oh, no, I no, I, I go deeper than that. I'm like, I'm purging this thing. <laughs> like, well, I, 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 purge, say clear, I let cleanse, it go. Purge, right? transmute. Yeah. I use the violet flame. Do you use the violet flame to transmute? Yeah, sometimes I do. It, it just depends because it, it just depends on what I feel resonating with me at the time, but it's, I've done dismantling. I do discharging. I do purging, like <laughs> dismantle, really, really strong like words to yeah. pull it out of my physical body. Yeah. Because you're pulling it from your mental body, your emotional body, your physical body, and your spiritual body. And people need to understand that there are, that all of us are all four aspects. So when we talk about healing, you can't just heal one part and not expect the you rest. You have to heal all of it. Right? You have to heal all four yeah. aspects. And so like you and I, Kimberly, we both focus on healing the, the um, spiritual aspects, mm -hmm. the energy aspects, right? So, um, but there are, there are emotional healers. So for example, I have a friend of mine, a couple of friends of mine who are therapists. Mm -hmm. They heal, they work with your emotional body. Mm -hmm. you, know? um, you and I happen to work with the spiritual body. So I work we, with the physical body too, because I'm a health coach and a um, medical medium or what you call medical yeah, so, intuitive. And, and, so. Yeah. And, and yeah. so I'm not, I work with the, yeah. I work with the spirit and I work with the heart mm -hmm. for my healing modalities. Um, but there are people who are, um, you know, naturopaths and mm -hmm. who are 
So it's, it's not just one thing. We have to understand that. So there are people who go to the doctor to be healed, but if you still have emotional, mental, and spiritual issues going on, you're not going to heal the disease because the word disease actually means dis-ease. It means being out of a state of ease. Our natural way of being is a state of ease. So if you're experiencing physical issues, it's because there's something else that's causing you to be out of ease. And fear causes that out of easeness, right? So we got we gotta, yep. we gotta work on healing the whole being, the holistic healing with the WH. <laughs> the WH. Right. Yeah. Um so it's it's about being open to finding and not every modality is going to work with everybody because every body is unique. Every mm -hmm. body is different. So what works on some bodies is going to be worked differently than it works on other bodies. And it took me a long time to grasp that because I when I when I first had my spiritual awakening, you know, started in 2008, I was like, ah, the only modality anybody needs is mine. And I think a lot of people kind of go through that when they first have that, oh my gosh, this works so amazing for me. And I kind of went through that. I'm like, why do I need any of these other healers? Because this worked, it worked for me until I got to a point where I realized, okay, I actually need other people's assistance in different areas of my life. So my transcendence process worked for me for spiritual healing. But when I need physical healing, I need to go someplace else where that is their area of expertise. Yeah. Um, but when I needed some help with some mental work, I found a therapist who uses EMDR, which worked beautifully for me. Yeah. That's EMDR really is some good stuff. People. I, I yeah. mentioned that. And I don't know if you, do you know about my book that I wrote my best-selling book, this one, the real fountain mm -hmm. of youth. Yeah. So I cover all of the different healing modalities in that book, because that book is physical, emotional, chemical, and environmental stress management book. So okay. it's the whole body, mind, spirit makeover program. And I go over all the different hundreds of modalities that you can use to clear, um, do emotional healing, physical healing, spiritual healing, all of that. I go over oh, cool. all that in there. So I talk about EMDR and all that, you know, I mention all those, uh, okay. but there's so many different modalities to choose from that you can't sit in your chair and bitch and complain and say, but I don't know what to do, or I don't have anything. You can't do that. No bitching allowed because there's so many choices for you out there right. of modalities that you can use. And if you don't do it, you cannot ascend because part of the ascension has to do with healing all of our trauma. If you are still fully traumatized and everybody, there was some, like, let's say there was a big solar flash. You may not, you may be leaving here. <laughs> you may not be staying here. If you want to ascend physically, when I say ascend, you are going to ascend. Don't get me wrong. You're still right. going to ascend, but you're going to ascend through the body dies. This body goes bye-bye. So, right. um, because the trauma, the energies that are going to be coming into this earth in the coming months and year and next several years are going to be so extreme that if you don't eat a healthy diet, do self-care every day, meditate, take really good care of your body, keep your thoughts positive all the time. If you don't keep high vibration mm -hmm. and you don't um, heal your all your trauma and your dark side of your, you know, do your shadow work, shadow work do your yeah. childhood trauma work, do all of that. If you don't do it, you will be physically leaving and then spiritually ascending through death of this, of this vessel of this avatar, because, right. um, the energies are going to be too extreme for somebody who is totally traumatized and riddled with all kinds of these emotional problems. You won't be able to ascend. I've been working on myself for 36 years, 36 years. I've been healing myself again and again and again and again until I'm clear as a bell. You know, there was a point several years ago where my psychic friend said to me, oh my God, you're clear as a bell. That's what they said. And I said, well, good. That means I succeeded because, I, because there were years where I was just a mess. I was a train wreck. I had people referring to me as a train wreck <laughs> and I had to heal that over and over and over again. And I did all the, that work so that I, my vessel is able to ascend in this, I'm able to ascend right. in this physical form. If you want to ascend in the physical form, you have to take care of the temple of the Holy Spirit. And if you don't do it now, then you will be one of those people who kills over of a heart attack and then you're ascending, but it's going to be your soul ascending, not staying here on earth and ascending as a group and creating um, the heavenly earth. 5D earth. You won't be here to do that. So it's yeah, really so, so, so for people to understand what Kimberly and I are talking about, that's all 4D. 
Mm -hmm. So for all these people who are talking about 3D to 5D, you don't spiritually bypass from 3D to 5D. Yeah. All yeah. of this work mm -hmm. is 4D stuff. 4D stuff, absolutely. So we're going up this spiritual spiral. I mean, some people call it the 4D bridge. It doesn't, it doesn't, go, it doesn't look like this. It's not 3D to 5D. It's, it's 3D to 5D, right? Yeah. So you, if you think about crossing the bridge, you're actually going up this um, but I, I refer to it as a spiritual spiral because what you do is you go up a little bit, you take a step up, then you sit there and process. Then you, it's like learn, process, test. Mm -hmm. If you didn't, if you, if the test didn't work, then you're going to process it some more mm -hmm. test. And if you pass the test then you go up another stair, right? Yep. So it's, it's like going up a spiral staircase. Yes. When people say, oh, I feel like I fell down a level. It's like, well, no, you didn't. You're just still sitting at that same level, but yeah. you haven't passed the, not the test. I might guess test is a good word for it, but you didn't, you didn't um, integrate the learning. So you're going to sit at that level until you integrate the learning. And then you go up another step. Kind of like the DNA spiral that's getting activated right now. You know, we used to be 12 strand until 12 the bad strand. guys got a hold of us and put us down to two. And now we're activating back up to 12 again. Yeah. That's so a we're, spiral so too. We're going, yeah. So we're going up the spiritual spiral mm -hmm. and then you get to the space of 5D. When you're in 5D, you pretty much have left everything behind that isn't Yay. pure love. Yay. <laughs> You've left everything behind that isn't pure love. Go humans, go humans. And go humans, humans. Do it. And, 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 it's, it's, and it's not, it isn't like, it doesn't happen instantaneously. It yeah. could, but it generally doesn't. Um, although, because there are so many modalities available now, it happens so much faster than it used to. You don't have to spend 30 years working on yourself like Kimberly and I did. Yeah. Because 30 years ago, all the modalities that exist now, they didn't exist. No. Yeah. You know, now you can do it so much faster. Yeah. And that would work very hard. hard 10 years ago. So, so my guidance <laughs> was telling me 10 years ago that people in the future would be able to move through it faster. There was a part of me that was like, oh man, that's not fair. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so we had to do it the hard way. So much work. But, oh my but now we're. Now we're here and it's like, how cool is that? That these people who are waking up now yeah. don't have to go through so much suffering to get to that point. Yeah, I'm happy like for my took kiddos. Us, what took us 30 years to do, you can do now in three. So mm -hmm. because there's so much more available and there's so many other people who have already led the way to be able to make it happen. So- yeah. Kimberly and I both have been at this for a long, long time. And it's because we've been at this for a long time that we are now giving back and teaching other people how to do it. I mean, the reason with the reason, you know, I, I, one, one of the words that I use sometimes is that we go and prepare a place for you. Mm -hmm. The work that we've been doing is to prepare a place for the rest of you. Yeah. And how amazing it is that this gets to happen in such a short period of time. I know, I know so many of you out there right now are complaining about how long it's taking. It's really not taking that long. We're actually moving way quicker because um, everybody, you all need to realize that we've been stuck in this web now for, um, well, 26 or so thousand years, if you go back to the very beginning of when we created the 3D matrix, but real, realistically, the bad stuff, 11 to 12,000 yeah. years yeah. ago. So we've been exactly. stuck in this for a long time. So when something takes thousands of years to create this horror, it's not going to reverse out overnight. It's going to take months, maybe years. And so we started the ascension process um, really the hard for during the harmonic convergence, the harmonic well, convergence. It was, be, it was before, well, no, there was one, not 87, but there was another one before that in 19, yeah. 1962, 63. Okay. I've been called 63. Some people say 62. Right. But that's when love returned to the planet. That's when love, and that's why John Lennon wrote that song, Imagine, you know? Yeah. yeah for that. And he wrote it in the five. And, that, and that's frequency. when the dark started fighting back. Mm-hmm. So that's what the Kennedy assassination was, was the dark saying, oh. Well, and they shit. killed Lennon too. They killed <laughs> right. John Lennon and he so, wrote that, that, That's when the love reason. started flooding back to the planet. You know, Mother Earth sent out a emergency call. Mm -hmm. Love started coming back to the planet to rebalance it. 
Mm -hmm. And so that's when the darkness started fighting back. It was like, oh, crap. We're starting to lose control. So that that um, the ascension isn't an overnight thing. So what's been happening though the last couple of years is light speed compared to what was happening before. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this seems like, especially the last two years, a lot of people feel like it's oh just dragging God. on and on and on and on. But mm -hmm. honestly, all of it, just in the last, think about all the people, like all my clients who come to me say, oh, Kimberly, I literally just woke up two months ago, or I woke up four months ago, or I woke up six months ago. Do you know how many millions and billions of people have woken up just in the last two years? Yeah, I get those two who say, I just woke up. What do I do now? And I'm like, yay! Yeah, I know. Yay. First of all, celebration, you know, it's like, congratulations. Yay. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They get a party for their effort because it's not easy to get out of a dark controlled mind spell. Right. You know, that's and not so easy to get to work. Mm -hmm. Now we now what we get to do is our souls work. Yep. And it's not easy in the beginning, you know, having to go through the mm -hmm. disbelieving process, but um, in my case, I call it the transcendence process, but it's so incredibly rewarding. Yeah. I always say I was born awake, but then I've gone through different levels of awakeness. So when I say born awake, I mean, born spiritually awake, mm -hmm. but then the political stuff just came to me within the last 10 years or so, like the, the religious about the religions, mm -hmm. because I was hardcore Catholic. I mean, I was in church every Sunday and doing rosaries and a teaching in the Catholic church and doing all that. So like I woke up within the last 10 years to the antics that they've been doing for mm. 2000 years and all the naughtiness and evil, or I shouldn't say naughty, like evil, like pure evil that they've been doing, you know, right. the fact that they burned and murdered 300 million women as witches, they killed like 300 million women, 300. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and, you, and you know what they say that, cause yeah. I was having this conversation with someone a couple of years ago, he said, oh no, no, that didn't happen. They were just burned in effigy. I'm like, uh, no, they actually were murdered. They killed 300 million women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some of them during the inquisitions, some of them, they said they were witches. And the reason why is they would take their property. Those were all women who, they were, they were um, powerful women. Yeah, they were po either powerful or they were healers or they were teachers or they were teaching spiritual stuff or they um, were or they had an opinion. Yeah, or they had an opinion or the, the, the main thing. The main yeah. thing was if you were beyond childbearing years, then you no longer had any value. Yeah, they killed a lot of older women They, you know, you're old, you're done. We're going to just kill you. And they would take their land, take their money, take their possessions. Oh, and they would have to run and hide in the woods. And then that's when they were called a witch because they had, they had to go live off the land mm -hmm. to survive. So they were hunted them down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. awful, awful, awful things that have been done. Yeah. And then, making red and, shoes. And, you know, and, they were, and, and here's the thing that frustrates me the most, Kimberly, is all of that was done using God's name in vain. I know, right? That's they, in the name of God, God, they said. Like, what about all the indigenous people that they raped, tortured, and murdered and killed? in the name of God, bringing Catholicism to Central America, Mexico, South America, all of the, the islands, all the different islands, yeah. the Hawaiian islands, the terrible things they did to the Hawaiian people um, up in Canada. They're now saying that there's 500,000 graves of indigenous children that were sacrificed they by these psychopaths. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here's, and so. here's, the, and here's my issue with all that. The number by the 10 commandments, the first one of the Ten Commandments is do not use my name in vain. And every single one of those cases is a case of using God's name in vain. Mm -hmm. It's not saying God's name. It's actually using God's name. In vain. Yeah. Like that saying, I'm going to murder God. you in the name of God. God doesn't kill. God is unconditional love. So basically you're breaking all the universal rules immediately when you're doing that. Yeah. Anytime you do something bad and you're doing it in the name of God, you're basically blaspheming God because God is love and you're going, you're breaking everything. You're breaking all the rules. So I get really irate about all this stuff because, you know, just the hit, because I, in past lives, I was the victim of, of, of a lot of their baloney. So, you yeah. know, I think, yeah, I think a lot of our viewers probably were too. Yeah. It's all get stuck in that cycle. And yeah. in my, in my case though, um, because I'm already an ascended master. In my case, I didn't get stuck in that in that cycle. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, it was about volunteering to come and play those roles mm-hmm. at a soul level. So I didn't get stuck in the in the karmic cycle like other people did. But on a soul level, volunteering to come in. And- oh, I wasn't stuck stuck in a karmic cycle. I volunteered to come in, but I have yeah. had I have been murdered. But that wheel of that you religion. talk about that a lot of people yeah. get stuck into. So there are there are some of us who actually volunteered to come in. Yeah, I've only been here six times. The people who are stuck in samsara have been, when I do readings for people, I can see the people who are stuck in samsara because they've Mm -hmm. had hundreds of lifetimes, hundreds. I've only had six previous incarnations, which isn't enough to be stuck in samsara. And the last time I was physically in a body was 2000 years ago. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I can tell you (laughs) when the last time was I came here because I come here whenever humanity needs help with the freedom movement. Yeah. So the last time I was here, I was um, a Jewish sympathizer. I was rescuing Jewish people during the Holocaust. Oh, during the Holocaust. Oh, awesome. I actually have a lot of clients who that was their past life. Mm -hmm. So I got murdered for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. That's what they do. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. Um, When my son was a little boy, he was having past life memories of being like a bald, um, guy like an older soldier like a sergeant in world war ii down in the 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 ditch down in the ditch Mm -hmm. fighting the nazis with guns he remembered fighting the nazis he was like a u.s soldier um and what i got when i did a reading on him like i did a scan to figure out where what was that was all about what i got is he was from new york new york and he was a u.s soldier and he was in the trenches is the word was in the trenches fighting the Nazis. And that's how he died. Actually, he died fighting the Nazis in that life. So, yeah. A lot of those souls are the ones that get, um, I don't say recycled, but I guess that's kind of what it is. They get stuck in that karmic cycle. Mm -hmm. Um, All those people that have died over and over again in all these various wars. Yeah. 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 It's really so, so, but I can tell the people when I do readings for people, I can tell who was stuck in samsara just by the fact that they, because all of the light workers who mm-hmm. purposely came here to free the, the planet from tyranny, we've only had two lives, three lives. I've, I've done readings for people that this is their first time here. They've never even been here before. Okay. Oh, that's cool. I think that's yeah. the case with my daughter. My mm-hmm. daughter came in pretty clear. Yeah. And, and they came here specifically for this event that's going on specifically Mm -hmm. for the event. And we call it an event, but it's really several year period. And I keep trying to tell people because there's so many people. It is an event. Yeah, it is an event, but it takes many years though, because a lot of people think ascension's an instantaneous thing, but it's not, it's a many year process. Yeah. Yeah. So well, and on this planet and our concept of time, Mm -hmm. you know, um yeah yeah it's a it's a process but it is still an event you know the great awakening is what um what i would the guidance i was getting at the beginning of 2020 before even COVID. what i was told is that an event horizon was occurring mm-hmm. so um spiritual when the spiritual realm call this an event horizon that Ooh, i just got tingles know. all over the top of my head when you said that <laughs> That's what's happening right now. Since started since 2020. I'm still getting them. <laughs> it's like weird tingles, like, you know, the event horizon. Yeah. Isn't that uh, cool? Yeah. Wow. So I never heard in. that terminology before. I've, I know there's a movie called event horizon, but I never heard that term used for ascension. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's where we are right now. And so as wow. dark as it looks, it's actually really quite extraordinary because what's happening is the darkness is being exposed. It's all being exposed. And everybody thinks that everything that's been going on the last several years is bad or two years, I guess, is really horrible. But actually, it's the opposite. Because if this stuff wouldn't have been brought out and, and revealed, then we'd be still stuck in the same baloney Absolutely. for another 26,000 years. So it all has to come up. And when it's coming up, it looks gross and disgusting and horrible. And like whoever knew that there were millions of tunnels underneath the earth where they're trafficking little babies and children and teenagers and even adults for their organs and, you know, all of that kind of stuff, you know, who knew, who knew about any of that? And that's been going on for now. It certainly became heightened. It became expanded since the discovery of stem stem cells. Mm -hmm. Right. But um, I think it's been going on for 
thousands of years. Well, it was actually, it's since they came here. So those tunnels, so just so you all know who created those tunnels, it wasn't our government, it wasn't militaries, it was actually the Draco reptilians. They created the tunnels 11,000 years ago when they came here because they're reptiles. They live in the dark, okay? They're kind of, they don't like the light. They live in the dark. They live underground, just like the mantids. There were some bad mantids that came here too. Um, and the grays, a lot of those creatures, they don't like light. If you shine light on them, they they run away like grays. That's why grays always kidnap humans at night. You never ever hear stories of people being kidnapped by a gray in the middle of the daytime. It's always while they're sleeping at night, they're dragged out of their bed or at night. It's always under darkness. Why? Because those creatures have these really big black eyes and they can't handle light. They cannot tolerate a lot of light. And they, they are dark. They come from the darkness, pits of hell, basically. And they created all those tunnels. Those tunnels were created by all of these dark beings. And they've been there for a really, really, really long time thousands of years and they were already harvesting humans for food we basically have been in their farm this is what yeshua told me it was kind of a hard lesson for me and mm -hmm. made me vomit like really sick i was really sick for a few days after learning that that all of us are basically been their food for twelve thousand years that we're like a farm to them and they just pluck us up they just take whatever human they want whenever they want us and they eat us and they like people while they're still alive, because then you have all the, they terrorize you first. So you release adrenaline into your blood and then you're more, um, it gives them more of a high or something when they eat you fresh or whatever, but that's, and then the blood of all the, the kids and the babies, you know, that they take, um, it, it gives them their life, whatever. So they've been doing this for like 11,000 years, 11,000 years. It's horrific. When I first found that out, I was sick for I don't know how long I had to do a lot of clearing on myself because when I every time I've learned all of these things I've had to do massive clearing because I am a very loving being you know I just vibrate in a frequency of love all the time and when I get that information it just makes me violently sick I right. just makes it's horrible it's like oh my god I'm living on this why did I come here and then I ask myself every time why the hell did I come here this is hell it's hell. Why did I come here? And then I'm like, damn it. I yeah, volunteered. You, know, you came here to help. Yeah. I, people yeah, free. yeah, I know. So the 11,000 years ago, I just wanted to explain to people that is the story of the garden of Eden. Yeah. It's the parable of the garden of Eden. That's when fear came to our planet. It's that, when fear came and it was them. They were the it was, fear. It was them. Yeah. So they, they, yep. they fear came to the planet took us out of the garden that we lived the whole in. The planet was the garden of Eden. Oh, right. The whole planet was a garden. Mm -hmm. And their reptilian God is the snake in the garden of Eden. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, they, that's what they and worship. it wasn't about, it wasn't about um, wisdom that drove us out of the garden. Part of the story that we've been told is that ignorance is bliss and that wisdom causes suffering. That's a story they told us at the very, very beginning. Yeah, it's a lie. It's a lie. Yeah. And that, um, but that's what that entire story was created to keep us one. And then that's when the divine feminine got blamed for all of man's issues, right? To, right. to, to, to put the masculine above the feminine. And we lost our connection to our divine mother who is again, necessary for that right. heart that's in all of us. So that the truth is hidden in all of our stories. And that's what the story of the garden of Eden actually is. It's a parable for what happened on our planet. Now on a soul level, as souls, we agreed to, to experience the contrast souls knew when they were coming in that they were going to experience the contrast of light and dark and fear and love, but um, that time is over. So what I was shown about, 12 years ago, when I first had my spiritual activations, Kimberly, when I, one of the first messages that came in was that earth is a learning planet yeah. and the collective of souls desire for it to be a planet of peace. Now we are at that point where the collective of souls have agreed for this to be a planet of peace. That's why all of this stuff is now starting to, cr to crumble around us because as a collective of souls, we've decided that this is no longer a learning planet. So what we're creating now is we're going back to the garden. We're creating the garden again. 
Mm -hmm. actually going to be a respite for the souls rather than a learning planet. So that's what we have to look forward to. That's what we need to focus on. Let's party time, on worldwide party all over the world, like ELO song. <laughs> There's going to be a party all over the world. That's party what we're headed towards. So let's focus on. I saw that two years ago. I was sitting in my chair and meditating and I got this huge vision of people taking to the streets and not protesting. I'm talking about having a party. Like know, celebrating everywhere, all around, over. Around, yeah. Like and that song and came in my head. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's actually coming. We're going to, we're going to have that. I would say maybe by the end of this year or, or 2023, definitely. The humanity is being set free. Yeah, definitely. 2023 is going to be amazing. In fact, the, the Chinese, um, uh, feng shui qigong astrology he uses the chinese astrology guide that i posted a while back on facebook and on my youtube he said because the the cycles go in the chinese astrology in 20 year periods he said that the the period we're ending a bad one and 2023 to 2043 is this really good positive all positive all good like all really good energy so we're at the oh. end of the cycle of the 20 year a really bad crappy horrible energy. Mm -hmm. So we're starting into this new, so 2023 on everybody is going to be really amazing, but this year, all the governments will be collapsing. The money system will be collapsing, possibly the education and schools. I hope big pharma and all of the drug thing is going to go bye-bye. We're hoping for that yeah, because they're all, they're all intertwined. It's all evil they're, and they're all intertwined. Mm -hmm. so all of our systems are going to be collapsing. So for people who don't know what's going on, that is going to be very, very scary because they're going to have their comfort zone pulled out from underneath them. For those of us who understand what it is, this is a really a beautiful thing. Absolutely. Being set free from our, for being set free. We're being freed. Yeah. Freed from our bondage of slavery. Yeah. We're being freed from the bond because we've been slaves for 11,000 11, years. years. Yeah. We've been slaves and nobody has known it. We're being freed. And it's so cool because we're finally going to be able to have our free will back again because we've had our free will stolen from us. It's been robbed. You're supposed to have free will, but ours has been stolen. It's been taken away. Yeah. Now we're having it returned. So you will actually be the actual, I mean, we've been, we've always been co-creators of our life, but not anywhere. We've made conscious, conscious creators. The difference is, so yeah. we've always, we've always had freedom of choice, but what we've had is freedom of Coerced choice. Freedom Coerced of, choice. It's not right? really the full right? free so, will. So it's very limited. Getting, very limited. Right? So what we're getting is yeah. conscious choice. Right. Conscious choice. And so the manifesting, what I was showed is I was told if you think you can manifest now, because I'm really good at manifesting, I teach mm -hmm. it. I teach. In fact, um, my daughter and I are going to be are creating a manifesting um, course together um, because I really want to teach people these, these concepts in a class kind of a, of a situation, but I've been a really expert manifester for probably 20 plus years of my life. And if, and, and I was told by my team, they're like, if you think you're good now, wait till you see what's wait till there's, wait till there's no resistance. Yeah. <laughs> when there's no resistance. Like I'll be able to put my hand out right? and go, Ooh, Ruby in my hand. Boing. There's a Ruby in my hand. Like those women in India. Did you ever see the video of those women in India that, um, learned the stuff that Jesus was teaching to manifest where they spit rubies and emeralds and diamonds out of their mouths <laughs> to their hand. No, yeah. I haven't seen Yeah. That. They're these women in India. They're these people who practice out al like alchemy and an ancient, really ancient manifesting and creating kind of like things. And these women like create diamonds and rubies and emeralds and sapphires and in, in their mouths. And then they spit them into their hand. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so what do they do with them? I don't know. I just saw this video a long time ago and I don't even remember the whole, all the thing. I was just blown away. I was like, wow, I want to do that. <laughs> That's so cool. You know, I would love to say, I want a chocolate uh, fudge sundae and boom, it appears on my plate. Wouldn't that be cool? But I think we're headed more to that kind of thing where we can create with energy. We can like actually design and create physicality like physical stuff with with the energy with our mind you know using telekinesis and telepathy and all these different things we're headed 
in that direction. Yeah, that's Eventually, part of the 5D reality. That, yeah, yeah, that's part of the 5D reality. So when you go back to, you know, how, how Yeshua walked on the earth and he said, you can do these things and more, that's what he was talking about. That yeah. every single one of us in this Christ consciousness reality, this love-based reality, yeah. our giftedness will be returned to us. There won't be right. disease. There won't be suffering. No. You know, we no. can cure homelessness like that. There won't be I mean, homelessness. Oh, it's like, that you're, you're, like, you're like spinning emeralds and diamonds and I'm thinking, curing homelessness i'm like that's where i go to <laughs> yeah <laughs> right yeah i don't really want any of that stuff i would love to create ha- so my thing is for the last 20 30 years when i've been meeting a lot of um women who are been in abusive relationships where their husbands you know or boyfriend mm-hmm. beat them up and they had to run away and they're single moms and they have children and they don't have a house to live in. I, right. I've always had a dream of building homeless housing for moms with kids, right? Because there's so many single mothers out there that are running away from a bad situation and they're destitute and they don't have any, you know, thing, yeah. you know, where to go, or they got laid off their job and they're a single mom. You know, I've always wanted to build, if I ever had billions of dollars, the first thing I would do is go build housing, but it would go beyond that. I would give them a hand up, not a handout. Right. So I would have coaches and counselors. I would have a makeup artist come in and make, give them a makeover, make them feel good about themselves, get their hair fixed, get, take them to a store, buy them some nice suits and clothes to make them feel good about themselves and then train them on how to interview for jobs and, you know, or teach them how do they serve their purpose on earth? Like find out what is your purpose? Like have psychic. We're not going to have jobs anymore. Yeah, that's true. We're not, right. but they're going to want to have a purpose though. They're going to have something. Okay, right. They're, do. they're not going to sit different. around their house all day that's doing different. nothing. Yeah. That's different. So right? help them find out what is it you're supposed to be doing? Are you supposed to be a healer? Are you supposed to be teaching kids? Are you supposed to do what? Are you supposed to be a musician? Are you right. supposed to do theater? What are you supposed to do? There'll still be entertainment in the future. It's going yeah. to be more conscious. Entertainment. Sure, but it's, what it is, is we're giving, people mm-hmm. are going to have options to do what they love, mm-hmm. not just work for money. Right. So even this idea of these, these services that we've had, that we've envisioned, that way are still based on yeah. old world concepts. Right. So if you're going to take this idea, then what does it look like in new earth concepts? Mm-hmm. Maybe what they're learning is gardening or what they're learning is mm-hmm. art or what they're learning is, is how, how to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Mm-hmm. Not just what job can they be trained for? So we, it's even about changing our languaging. Mm-hmm. So that the work that, so that as we're creating these humanitarian projects, what is, what is it that they're moving into? Mm-hmm. You know, maybe they, maybe they want to own a restaurant and cook for other people. Mm-hmm. Eventually that's going to go away too. Because so I was talking to someone earlier today and she said, oh, but she was seeing in the future, she says that there won't even be kitchens in people's houses because we won't even need to eat food the old way that we used to eat food. Oh, that's going to be weird. I actually like going to a restaurant and sitting down and having a meal and well, trying and out different Some things. people might choose to have restaurants, but what the guidance that I get from, from uh, Metatron, this book that I'm writing at right now about new earth is that, that in the future, people will, will put more emphasis on cooking with people they love and being with people they love rather than going and eating in a restaurant with strangers. Well, that's true. But what about, I'll give you an example of myself. So I was a travel agent until I got laid off by the pandemic. Right. And um, my reason I was a travel agent is because I love traveling all over the world and I'm a big foodie and I really love trying all the cuisines. I love eating Thai food and, and Italian food in Italy and baguette every day right. for lunch in France and, you know, baguette and country styled uh, fromage, you know, and, and, you know, all that. I like to try all of these different cultural cuisines so that's not going to be fair because I have a lot of friends no, who are no, just no, like but, me. But the, but the difference is people yeah. are going to do it because that's what they love to do and not because right. they do have the money. Right. I see what you're saying. But there's yeah. a lot of people who want to have restaurants because that's their passion and they right. really love having a restaurant. But they're not doing it so. because they because they own a whatever franchise. You know what I mean? Yeah, I see what you're saying. They own yeah. a franchise because but they're but trying it's, to pay the but bills. But you have these like yeah. family-owned restaurants where their clients are like family. 
Well, that's how it is in Italy and France. If you go to Italy and France, um, you don't find McDonald's, and especially when you're in Cinque Terre or you're on a Malfi coast or something in all of those villages, all you have are little family owned bakeries and little yep. family owned meat um, carnerias or whatever it's called, where they have the beet, little family owned delis, little family owned restaurants. They don't have fast food in any of those places. They right. don't exist. It's all family owned. And it's been in the, the family multiple generations because they pass it down and because it's a love and a passion for them. Like they're passionate about it. It's what they love and enjoy. So what is wrong with that being in our five day future? It's not that it's not that there's anything wrong with it. For, for, for oh, starters, right. we need to get past the whole right, wrong. Right. That doesn't, the whole right, wrong stuff doesn't even exist. Right. Right. That's part of the duality reality. That's part yeah, of that's the true. right, wrong contrast. Mm -hmm. That's actually what the, the, the dark ones brought with them 11,000 years ago. Right. Belief in right and wrong. Yeah. Or dark and light and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. The so duality. Brought, it's all duality. Contrast duality with them. So in this, in this love-based reality we're creating, people will do things because they love to do it. Right. They're doing it because really it's love it. so coming it's like from the heart. It's like having a garden party and you invite mm -hmm. all your friends over and you have a garden party. It's mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Right. So even with restaurants, it, it can be that kind of thing where it's like they're they're having all of their friends over and we're having a garden party at, at their restaurant. But you see how that's different than right. going out to eat now, where yeah. now restaurants exist for the purpose of making money, mm -hmm. hiring employees and all of that. The the whole the entire mindset's gonna shift. Right. That's that's really incredible. I'm looking forward to all of this. And and honestly. Because I'm in such a turmoil with, you know, between the constant body pain from my osteoarthritis and just all the things I, and then being attacked by family on a daily basis because they think I'm um, belong to an yeah. anti and that's, and that's actually what's cult. That's actually what's contributing to your body aches. Is yeah, your, I, I know. I'm being, yeah. I'm being harassed on a daily basis. And so, you know, so I have mornings where I'll wake up and say, I don't want to you know, I don't even want to get out of bed. Why should I even bother? Because, you know, life kind of is stinky, but then what wakes me up and makes me kind of slap in the face, like to wake me up or shake me is that burning desire to get to where I know we're heading because I can see the future. Like I know that the future is really, really good. And that is what gets me out of bed and going, okay, I got to do this because we are headed in the right direction and they're right. not going to be able to stop what's coming. They can't stop it. Yeah. So yeah. that keeps me going because otherwise I would just lay there and not get out of bed. Honestly, I wouldn't, I would just say, screw it. Why I'm going to get attacked all day by my family. My body's going to be in pain. So why should I even bother getting out of bed? I have people you know, because you know that that's yeah. all temporary, you know, yeah. and, and I know, and that, I know the future the hard part. I mean, like for me, I'm, I'm like, there are certain things going on with my body. I would just love to not be dealing with anymore. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I hope the Resitone 12 helps me. <laughs> hey, that, me too. I'm like, I have tried everything under the sun yeah. for psoriasis. If that works for me, I'll be singing its praises. Yeah, I had several like doctors tell me there's of. no cure for my osteoarthritis and degenerative disc disease because they're both degenerative, not inflammatory. And because I'm already on the anti-inflammatory diet and supplements and this and that, but it, when your joint is like in my hand, I can't even use my left hand anymore. Um, when your joint is degenerating down and it's eroding, there's, they said, there's no cure other than you wait until it gets so bad that you need surgery. And I can't have right. surgery. I'm not a candidate for surgery, um, because I can't process the, the, uh, drugs that they give you for the, yeah. the surgery. Yeah. So, so I can't have the surgery. So then I have these doctors saying there's no cure for osteoarthritis and degenerative, um, disease. And so I'm like thinking in my head, you guys are a bunch of effing liars. There are cures because you know, you know that. Yeah. There are cures. There isn't anything that can't be cured. Just yeah. Because, because God, just because has they don't have a cure, mm -hmm. right? They don't have a cure, but God has a cure for everything. And I also believe plant medicine, like all the part of why they're chopping down the rainforest in South America, like crazy is because there's hundreds of cures for cancers and all kinds of diseases in those rainforests and they don't want us to have them. Yeah. So they, yeah, they don't, they, they're not eradicated. Actually, yeah. They're not looking for a cure for, for cancer. Yeah. There's too much money and sickness. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
but the, the human body has the ability to heal itself. And that's yes. from my frustration. I'm like, I have a chat with my body all the time. I'm like, look, I know you have the ability to heal yourself. So tell me what it is I need to do mm-hmm. in order to heal you. I've tried that. It hasn't worked for this thing. For me. Like <laughs> I tried that over and over again and it hasn't worked. I've tried everything. Tell me, tell me what, tell me what you need and I'll give it to you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've, I've asked my body over and over, what do I need to do to, so I can use my hand again? What can I do to move my neck again? And I get dead silence every time. Ah. And I finally gave up and said, uh, I don't know what to do. You know, I've tried all the different energy modalities and yeah. That's yeah. why I'm hoping the Resitone works. It's one thing I haven't tried. I'm one of these people I'll turn over every stone until I fix whatever the problem is, which is why I fixed all the things I had in my past. I used to have hundreds of allergies and now I'm just down to a few because I healed all the other ones because I've healed myself over and over and over again for mm-hmm. 36 years of my life. Um, so, you know, the first time was when I was misdiagnosed by an allopathic doctor when I was 19 years old. Um, and that actually, that was 37 years ago. And I, and that was my wake up to the medical industry being a fraudster, being a big fraud because they don't really heal it because then she handed me a drug and said, I don't, you know, here's what's wrong with you. She misdiagnosed, handed me a drug, went to my mom, who was a nurse at the time. And my mom said, if you take that, it's going to make you really sick. And I don't believe you have what she said. So she said, go to my doctor. So I went to her doctor and the doctor said, not only do you not have that illness that she said you have, but if you would have taken the drug, it would have probably made you very sick or killed you. So they're just guessing. Yeah. So, so I, that was my wake up at age 19, 20, whatever it was, woke up to the fact that these people are a bunch of dumb A's. They don't know what they're doing. They're totally strings, puppets on a string from Mm -hmm. the American Medical Association who was started by the Rockefellers. And it's all about um, making you sick, keeping you sick, filling you with their drugs, selling you their drugs for $800 a month or whatever you pay for insulin and keeping you sick and just, you know, stringing you along. I mean, thank God I don't have to take insulin, but I have clients who do, and they have to pay $800 a month for it. I just heard, um, our current president speaking in the, whatever the speech to America the other day, the, what does they call that? The the state of union. Yeah. The state of the union saying that he wanted to lower the cost of insulin and stuff like that to like $30 a month instead of, you know, 800 or whatever is charging. And I was like, I'd love to see him put his money where his mouth is, but they, we know they're going to raise taxes to do everything he was saying, because he was saying, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And my husband kept saying, yeah, and you're going to raise our taxes in order to do At least your husband's paying attention to that because people don't get it. They're like, oh, free medical care. No, you're going to pay for it. It's never free. It's never free. Where's the money going to come from? It comes from us, the people. Yeah, it's not free. (laughs) Nothing is free in this world. In taxes. Yeah. Nothing's yeah. free in this world, but it's going to be in 5D because we're going to get free energy with the Tesla stuff. We're going to get free, free, free in the future quantum yeah. world. Yeah. So I'm looking at the time and I've got to go because I, go. I went an yeah, hour. We talk, over. we talk longer than you yeah. said you could. So, yeah, I have yeah. to because I have appointments today I've got to get to and things I got to do in between. So, but I hope all of you found our or bat- rattling on and on. I hope our you found girl it. Chat. Yeah, our girl <laughs> chat where we just kind of rattle on and on about whatever's on our chest. We get it off our chest, you know. Um, hopefully you found it helpful for what you're going through and, it, and you identify with some of what we say. We, we don't, you know, Victoria and I don't expect you guys to believe everything we believe or agree with everything that we say. We're just here um, sharing our truth and sharing, you know, what we know and our, our knowledge and our information that we get from other sources or from ourselves or our higher self or whatever. We're just here sharing it with people who it, maybe it resonates with you. Maybe it doesn't. Hopefully we give you a smile on your face for today. You know, we make you smile and go away feeling a little bit better, a little bit more supported and, and positive. Everything we do on our channels is always uplifting and positive. We don't ever do doom and gloom thing. Like it's the end of the world. Everybody run and hide. Yeah. We don't, we don't do that. We, it's the we, end of their world. Yeah. It's the end of their yeah. world. Exactly. Yeah. We, we try to uplift you and show you because what is coming is truly beautiful and amazing. And because I have prophetic, I get prophetic, you know, visions of 
like worldwide, like future kind of things. Um, unfortunately, some of them are, are, are not so good. Um, recently, I saw that there's going to be a volcanic eruption that's going to wipe out some city and that wasn't too pleasant, but it's, you know, what can I say? <laughs> These things. Uh, yeah. So the, the earth is changing. Yeah. The earth is changing. There's going to be a lot of weather kind of stuff this year, people. So just, just make sure you have, um, food put away like a couple months supply always, because there's going to be floods, famines, earthquakes, volcanoes, and they're all being caused by a combination of the earth reacting to the human because earth is a consciousness, earth is a conscious being, and she's reacting to all of our turmoil that we're going through. So she's going to be having some growing pains where a volcano goes off and there's an earthquake. But a lot of the stuff is being caused by directed energy weapons and DARPA and all that kind of stuff too. So yeah, well, and not only that, but the Earth herself is actually becoming a five, a fifth dimensional being right. as well. So she's shifting. So she's shedding, she's shedding mm -hmm. things off that don't no yeah. longer resonate with her. So yeah. Um, so the best thing we can do is raise our own vibration to, yep. to evolve along with her. Yeah, and don't have any fear about any of this stuff ever. Like if you hear, yeah. if they show things like, oh, there might be a tsunami or there might be a this or that, you, that's where you need to tap into your higher self and your team because you have guides and angels there to protect you. They will make sure that you are not in the wrong place at the wrong time. Right. They will make sure like, like uh, for example, Victoria lives near the ocean, okay? If there was going to be a tsunami where she lives, her team would tell her, get the heck out of here now. And they would make her move, either move away completely or they would send her on a vacation somewhere or something at the time that that, that that happened, because we all have angels protecting us and watching out for us. I, my team made me move almost 400 miles. Okay. To a safer place because the area I was in was not safe. So, um, you know, are you glad now that you moved? Huh? And now you're glad that you moved. Oh yeah. I'm really glad that I moved. And I didn't really realize the, the extremity of what I was going through at the time. Like when I went through that whole experience, I didn't realize what was happening at the time. I found out afterwards, that's why that happened. Like here's yeah. why this happened because I had to get somewhere that was safe. And so I have all these uh, clients I'm counseling all day long that are telling me, um, um, oh, I'm moving to North Carolina or I'm moving to Florida. Oh, I'm moving to Texas. Oh, I'm moving here and moving there. And they're all being their Their team is pushing them to do this right now because yeah. you're being sent to go somewhere. If you are one of these people who your family's in the process of moving, like one of my friends just came from Oahu. Now she's in Idaho. She moved from Oahu to Idaho. So uh -huh. um, because Oahu is going to have some nasty nasty things happen, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, that are going to start happening. Places. Yeah. Volcanic stuff. Like I said, I saw a volcano erupting that is near a city and it looks to me like it's Hawaii, mm -hmm. um, but it's not the big Island. I'm guessing I'm, I'm picking up Oahu. So if you know anyone who's on Oahu, tell them to get out of there because a lot of the Hawaiian people, the indigenous people are actually getting the heck out of Oahu and going to Maui, going to the big Island or going to Kauai because those islands are going to be fine. But Oahu has a lot of trafficking, a lot of dumbs, a lot of dr both drug and human trafficking. It's like the oh. epicenter of that for the Hawaiian, the Pacific. Oahu is like the hub of trafficking for the Pacific. So there's going to be a lot of major stuff um, happening there. So if you know people who live in Oahu, you may want to consider recommending to them to go to one of the other islands or to come back to the, the mainland because some um, seriously nasty stuff according to the kahunas like the the high priestesses of the hawaiian religion um there are some nasty things that are coming for oahu so oh, wow. um yeah really bad stuff i wouldn't want to be there in fact i have no interest in going near, near it with the 10-foot pole if i go back over to hawaii i'm going to go to either maui or Kauai or the big island that's where okay. i'm going to go to visit so um wow. yeah so that's something really important when you when all of the um, indigenous people are moving the hell out of a specific spot, you know, something, yeah, really follow, follow what they're doing. Yeah. They're follow. It would be kind of yeah. like if, if all the Lakota Indians in, um, Montana and South Dakota and those areas, all of a sudden made this mass exodus, exodus out of their area. Think about what that means. That's pretty, yeah. that's pretty serious. That means something really crazy and horrible is about to hit that area. So you've right. got indigenous people fleeing Oahu like crazy. 
So think, think very highly about this. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it, and this is going to be happening all over the world. Do not be afraid because I promise you, if you're somebody watching us right now, you are somebody who's awake enough that you can tune into your team and you are protected. You are protected. So don't worry about it because you will be in the right place at the right time. And just ask every day a protection prayer. I always ask every morning, Archangel Michael, please place protection over me, over my family, over my home, over my cars, over my computers, you know, everything. Ask for that. Ask for that. And you will be fine. Yeah. And listen. That's and listen. Thing. Listen with I, your heart. If you're if you're asking, then listen. Yeah. Because listen with your heart ask, they don't listen. and listen with your third eye. Listen with your third eye and listen with your heart, not with your human mind. Because when you get your human mind in, you're not, you're, you're not getting a clear connection to source, to God. So you get your mind out of it and get into your heart space, breathe into your heart space and open up your heart to, to the God channel, <laughs> the God frequency. Love that. Love yeah. that. That's how Victoria and I connect. We connect through our heart to God. We connect directly through our heart. That's how Miriam of Magdala, that's how she connects and did connect when she was here. She connects through her heart space, through the mm -hmm. sacred heart of Mary, Mother Mary, same thing right. up to God. It's all through that heart, you know, all the but divine the feminine. Heart light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the divine, the divine feminine. So you've got your like Joan of Arc, Mother Mary, Mary Magdalene. Um, Kuan Yin, uh, Isis, these are all like divine feminine. They're all part of the sisterhood of the rose and they all connect with source through the heart space, every single one of them. So, but I've got to sign off because I'm going to go big doo doo, but <laughs> I've got to go. But okay. th thanks everybody for, for um, following us and please watching, like listening. and share. Yeah, hit the like button and Victoria will be posting this on her uh, channel. Um, and what is your channel? Your channel is Victoria Reynolds, right? Or is it? Yeah, I have two different channels. My okay. show is fearless and free TV. And that's where I interview. That's where I post my own personal teaching and, and my interviews. Okay. Um, but this, because it's more conversation, it's going to be posted on my personal channel, which is Victoria Reynolds. Okay. So I will post to her link down below. And then you, of course, you know, mine is spiritual growth journeys, but we'll both have this on both of our channels. And, um, hopefully we're going to do this thing at least once a month, this Victoria Kimberly show thing. So <laughs> <laughs> we say that every month, I mean, every time, but it's usually, yeah, we get really busy Although every, once a month. Mom. I think is a really good idea mm -hmm. what is it on our calendar. I can handle once a month, once a week, I wouldn't be able to handle my schedule is too insane. So <laughs> Maybe we can do once a month. Yeah. All right. Well, bye okay. everybody. I hope you bye. have a blessed, wonderful day, wherever you are. Yes. Be blessed. Yes.